haven't asked him anything yet. Just a, a, a few points for the record, picking up on Mr. Moore's question. I mean, the first point that we have to deal with when we talk about preemption and states' rights. We live in a federalist society. We have local government, state government, and federal government. And in fact, if we really want a very simple, effective system, we could have a dictator sitting a few blocks away from here, wipe out state government, everything would be nice and simple. Very few of us want to live in that society. We live in a society where different states have different regulations for how fast you can drive your car, and a dozen other things. We call that American democracy. That's what we call it. Does it cause problems sometimes? Yes, it does. But the other side of that is that sometimes somewhere in California or in Vermont or in New Hampshire, some attorney general or some member of the legislature or some governor comes up with a great idea and it works in that state, and other states steal that ideas, and eventually it filters here to Washington, D.C., and it becomes the law of the land. Many of my conservative friends say that all the time. They say states are the laboratories of democracy. My friend is nodding his head in agreement. So some of us get a little bit confused when our conservative friends on Tuesdays or Wednesdays tell us they want the big, bad federal government, which they knock on Mondays and Fridays, as terrible to exempt uh, to uh, limit the ability of states to protect consumers. That's, that's one point. Second point, just for the record, I think, Mr. Kolstrom, if my memory is correct, you indicated that if we have states moving in different directions, their interest rates might be higher. I think, I don't, did you say that, or I think you said that. I think the, the impact would be there would be more cost in the system. Clearly, that's the case. Well, let me tell you what the case is. Uh, in, uh, as a result of the 1996 uh, the Fair Credit Reporting Act amendments, they, ex they exempted stronger consumer protection statutes in California, Massachusetts, and Vermont from preemption. So we still have uh, those laws. And what we have seen in those three states is very low bankruptcy rates. Uh, in fact, uh, Vermont now has the lowest rate of consumer bankruptcies in the country. And also, in terms of mortgage rates, uh, the most recent data indicate that the state of California has the lowest effective rate of a conventional mortgage in the nation, and Vermont and Massachusetts were well below the median. Those are states that have the rights. You know, and you were suggesting this would be a terrible thing, but those states have done uh, okay. The uh, last question that I would ask is you suggested, Mr. Kalstrom, that that legalese, and I certainly agree with you, that you have very complicated language, was developed by lawyers. But those were developed by your lawyers. Well, the industry's lawyers. And the I would argue... The regulators, that, sir. Well, then you'll have to tell me mainly why it is, that, why it is that credit unions operating under the same law have much simpler language. Uh, I can't answer that question. I don't know the answer to that. All right, but which, largely, I'm told, and I'm, I stand to be corrected, that the bulk of the work was done by lawyers representing the seven different regulators. I'm sure there was input uh, with the industry. Clearly, I'm sure there was. But, but the final result was written the, the by the industry. The bottom line is they're not understandable. Right. I mean, we certainly agree on that. And to the best of my knowledge, credit unions operating under the same law and the same regulations have easily understood language. And you might want to look into that. Sir. I'll look that up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank the gentleman very much, and I would just editorially comment that some of us on our side sometimes wonder why members of your party are